Mother, are you all right? Yes, yes. Did you think I'd had another stroke? I just can't get to sleep. Oh. And I can't reach my pills. You shouldn't have any more. No more than two, Dr. Wainwright said. I'll make you a nice hot drink instead. I don't want a hot drink. Let me tidy the bedclothes then. Make you comfy. Hmm. Sweet Louise. Always so patient. Let's move you up a bit, shall we? Did I wake you? No. Mm. I was reading. I wouldn't have rung, only somehow at this hour everything seems so bleak. I know. Never mind, five days and you'll be rid of me. That's no way to talk. Gadding off with your school chum, what's her name? Cynthia Bowers. No tiresome old mother to think about. Of course I'll think of you. Do you realise it's the first time you've been away without me for... Let's see. Ten years. Since Daddy died. It's only for a week, Mother. Just a week. I still miss my little girl. Hardly a little girl. As far as I'm concerned, you'll always be my little girl. I'm sure you'll have a marvellous time with Philip and Janet. Now, for the pillows. You're always saying you don't see enough of Philip. I know how busy he is. But then he's a very important person these days. Then he and Janet are always entertaining clients and so on. (laughs) No time for me. But that's what you expect with a son, isn't it? Your son's your son till he gains a wife. But your daughter's your daughter all your life. A letter came for us, by the way, I'd forgotten. A letter? From Philip and Janet. Mrs Hoskins met the postman on her way in yesterday. She put it on the shelf. Oh, it'll be the arrangements for Friday. Let's tuck these blankets in. Do you think Janet will be collecting me in the new car? I dare say. Fancy Philip with a rose. (laughs) Remember how keen he was on cars as a boy? We used to give him those miniature ones. I remember. You don't think she'll come in the mini, do you? If there's any problems, we'll sort them out tomorrow. Can't we read the letter now? It's two o'clock, Mother. To set Mummy's mind at rest. All right. It's on the shelf. Which train are you catching on Friday? There's one after lunch. Shall I read it? Please. My dear mother and Louise, we've tried to ring you several times without success. That must have been when Mrs Hoskins left the phone off the hook. The fact is, something important has cropped up on the work front which will prevent us being able to have Mother here after all. No. I realise this will probably throw your plans a bit, but I'm afraid it's unavoidable. He, He goes on to explain that he and Janet have to go to this conference in Amsterdam and to say that he hopes you'll be able to go there some other time. Oh, well, can't be helped. The penalty of having a successful son. And you'll be able to put your friend off in good time, won't you? You know, in a way, I'm quite relieved. I wasn't looking forward to all that upheaval. And Janet is such a hard girl. Not like my sweet Louise. I've been lucky with my daughter. Lucky? You call it luck? What else? That wasn't luck, Mother. What? You created me. You and Father. Just as you made Philip what he is. I don't know what you mean. (laughs) Public school, university trips abroad. He had the lot, didn't he? We gave him every chance we could, naturally. What was so natural about it? Well, Well, go on. Tell me. I'd be interested to know. He was our only son. Not your only child. We couldn't afford private education for you both. I was the elder. He was the boy. And that gave him some divine right? 
What's the matter with you? He had half the intelligence I had. He was a late developer. You wouldn't have had to pay crammers to get me into a decent school. He did well once he got there. He had the personality, the drive and ambition. You mean you had? Louise. I can hear you now, goading him on. Try harder, Philip. Try harder. Daddy will buy you a bicycle. A child needs incentive. I didn't. We only... But competitiveness in him was something to be encouraged. Healthy aggression, you called it. With me... It was something to be subdued as unfeminine. So it is. I hate aggressive females. You did a good job on me altogether, didn't you? Instilled all those admirable female virtues. Gentleness, patience, sweetness. There's nothing wrong with those. Taught me cookery, sewing, acceptance. You talk as though we held you back. You had your work at the library? Part-time librarian. Hardly stretching. Not for someone who wanted to be a barrister. Oh, oh, you never told us that. Oh, yes, I did. You don't even remember, do you? I was 12 at the time. There was still a small spark alight in me. You came in to say goodnight, and I plucked up courage to tell you. Do you know what you did? You laughed. Barrister's a man's job. That's what you said then? And I still think so. You always seem to enjoy your work at the library. I enjoyed getting out. But it was hardly a career, was it? Not like Philip's job. I never realised how much you resented your brother. It's not him I resent, but your attitude to him. Take now. He's let us down like this, casually, without any thought of what it might mean to us. So that's it. And you calmly accept it, because it's him just as you automatically assume that sweet Louise will cancel her holiday. Never mind the fact that I needed that break as I've never needed anything before. Naughty mummy. She didn't realise. Is my little girl very tired? <laughs> tired? Of course she is. You don't know how tired. Then, of course, she shall still go away. Mummy will see to that. I'll ask Dr. Wainwright to put me in one of those places. And you'll cry off, like you did before. Oh, I'm sure I could survive it for a week if it meant you having a rest. And I'd feel so guilty my holiday would become a penance. This isn't my Louise talking. Isn't it? No, no. But Mummy understands. You're at a difficult age. I guess that would be coming. I don't know what's got into you tonight. Nothing that wasn't there all the time. Buried years back. Along with all my hopes and ambitions. You've been drinking, I suppose. <laughs> I know you do sometimes, on the quiet, up in your room. I've smelt it on your breath. And what if I have? Is it surprising if I drink? Christ, what else is that to do? Oh, oh no, not that. Not the crocodile tears. Why are you being so unkind? Stop it, Mother. Anything I did in the past, I, I only did it for the best. Best for whom? For Philip? For yourself? Never for me. You've really got it to a fine art, haven't you? Even now you manage to cry prettily. Don't, please. Please, I've got one of my headaches. That act now, I it? have, I promise. I don't feel at all well. Nor do I. I feel sick to the stomach. When I think of what I've become, my life just ticking away... Like that bloody clock there. And the most terrifying thing is that I could go on like this indefinitely. Imagine ten, fifteen years of this. Don't look at me like that, Louise. Like what, Mother? I know what you're thinking. Do you? If I was out of the way, you'd be free. It's the only way I can be, isn't it? 
You'll be rid of me soon. I could have another stroke at any time. Dr. Wainwright said it was unlikely. And even if you did, there's no guarantee it would kill you. No. There's only one answer, isn't there? You don't know what you're saying. The only way. Don't be ridiculous, Louise. Sweet Louise, turn sour. Pull yourself together. You know you wouldn't hurt me. I'm your mother. Wouldn't I? All right, then. You think I want to go on like this? A helpless invalid. Oh, you were never helpless. You could easily give me an overdose of those pills. Dr. Wainwright would think I'd taken them myself. Yes. No one would ever suspect such a doting daughter. But pills are too risky. There are other ways. Oh, yes, plenty. But they're either messy or unreliable. There's only one method I can think of that's foolproof. What's that? I could suffocate you, couldn't I? With this pillow. (laughs) Smother you. Like you smothered me all my life. Go on, then. (laughs) What are you waiting for? (laughs) What are you waiting for, Louise? Kill me. It's all right. I've got you. I've got you. That's Mummy's girl. In Tick Tock by Jill Hyam, Grace was played by Betty Hardy, and Louise by Brenda Kay. The play was directed by Kay Patrick. <laughs> <laughs>